All right, welcome back everybody. Today, what I'm gonna show you how to do is enable the Windows subsystem for Linux uh, on your computer. So I've been meaning to do this for a while and I never really made a video in the beginning on how to actually get this going, but basically what you can do is enable um, Linux to run on your Windows computer. That way you can have kind of the best of both worlds. You can have all the Linux uh, programs available to you as well as the ease of use of Windows with um, things like the GUI of R, easy installation, or um, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, all that easy stuff to use. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is actually enable the feature of Microsoft Windows Subsystem for Linux. And to do that, what we can do is we can go to PowerShell and we need to run this as an administrator. And we need to obviously OK. Uh, the thing here though for me is that I'm running this inside of a uh, virtual machine. So on my computer, as I've previously made videos and stuff, I already have the Windows subsystem for Linux enabled. Um, so in this virtual machine, I'm gonna enable Windows subsystem for Linux version one. On your computer, if your version is later than uh, larger than 18362, and if we just type version here, we can go to the system information and then we can see um, for me, I have 18.363. So theoretically, I would be able to enable the Windows subsystem for Linux too, but I'm already running within a virtual machine. So then I would be in a virtual machine, in a virtual machine. And um, trying to set that up, it didn't ever work. Uh, and maybe if I spent some more time trying to figure it out, it would get uh, to the point where it could work. But what I'm going to show you is how to set up um, just the Windows subsystem for Linux version one. That's all that I've used in the past. I've never gone to the Windows subsystem for uh, Linux version number two. Um, it runs as a virtual machine and it's supposed to be a little bit more powerful uh, compared to version one. But the first thing that we need to do is do dism.exe and then we need to do online. And then what we want to do is we want to enable a feature. So we'll do enable feature. And then what is that feature that we want to enable? We want to enable um, Windows subsystem for Linux. So we need to do feature name and then Microsoft, Microsoft dash Windows dash subsystem dash Linux. And then we want to do all and then we don't want it to restart. So no restart. So what that'll do is it's gonna enable our Microsoft Windows subsystem for Linux. So enabling it, and then it's not gonna restart. We'll go ahead and then we go a little progress bar. Boom, done. Uh, so for us, since we don't have the ability uh, currently in order to um, upgrade that to Windows Subsystem for Linux 2, what we can do is just go ahead and restart our computer. And when we, well, we can actually install here. So if we go to the Microsoft Store, and this is just a fresh install of Windows, up here we can go Ubuntu, or we can search whatever Linux that we want. Um, let's just search Linux. We get a bunch of different versions. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install 20.04. That's kind of the workstations that we have at work um, as uh, in addition to CentOS, but just gonna install Ubuntu and then the latest version and then no thanks. And what that'll do is it'll go ahead and start downloading it. Um, we won't be actually be able to run it yet. We have to restart our computer, I believe, in order to actually get this um, enabled completely. And then once we restart, we'll come back uh, and then we'll start up this Ubuntu uh, workstation kind of inside of our Windows computer and that'll go ahead and install. We'll give it a username, a password, and then we'll be good to go. Just like when we were using the um, Windows subsystem for Linux in the past uh, on, our, on our computers. So I will see you back here when this gets all done, installed and restarted. All right, we're back on our Windows machine. Now what we can do is go ahead and go to the start menu, open up our Ubuntu 2004, and it's gonna install um, Ubuntu now. So this is like the first time that you would start up your Ubuntu machine. 
um, after installing it onto like a hard drive, this is what it's going to do. It's going to install once it gets done doing all of the stuff in the background, it's going to ask you for that username. Um, we can go ahead and get, see that task manager will come up. You can actually see it working in the background. There you go. Shouldn't take too long. What we can also do is go ahead and get a mini conda since that's everything that we've been running in the past. Go to the mini conda page. Da, da, da. All right, so then we'll do Linux installer. We got this guy here. We can right click, uh, copy link, and there we go. And we'll just wait for this to ask us um, for the username and password, and then we'll continue on from there. All right, so now we have our um, Windows Subsystem for Linux asking us what our username should be. So here I'm just going to type user uh, and then password. I'm just going to type password. And retype your password, password again. And there we go. So now it's all installed. What we can do is go ahead and do something like ls. There's nothing here. Um, uh, wget. And then we can install our mini conda. We'll go ahead and download that. Awesome. So now if we do ls again, it should be in that folder. We can do bash and then mini conda, and then go ahead and run that, get it all installed. Type yes. And then yes, we do want to actually uh, install here. All right, do we want to actually initialize Miniconda? Yes, we do. All right, so now that Miniconda is installed, what we actually have to do is restart. So if we do exit, oops, exit, and then we can go ahead back to Windows, open up our Ubuntu, and then here we are. And if we do Conda, Conda is now installed. So we can go ahead and install whatever tool that we would be using, like uh, FastQC or um, Trimomatic, Star, Unicycler, whatever our tool is, we can go ahead and install it uh, with our channels. So we can kind of continue where we initially started, but now we actually have uh, the ability to run everything on Windows, um, all of our Linux tools on Windows, which is really great and useful. So yeah, if you guys like this, go ahead, like, and subscribe. Um, I will try to post another one next week. I'm having family coming this week, so it might be kind of hard to plan everything out. But I hope this was actually helpful. I know for me, getting Linux installed on my Windows computer was super handy. That way, whenever I needed to run something super convenient, it's right there. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and install or try to install Windows Subsystem for Linux 2, I can put a link down to the actual document below in the description, and then you can try that out. If it doesn't work, um, I would just stick with Lindo, uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux 1. That's everything that I've been using, and I've had decent luck with it so far. No need to upgrade it. Um, it's really useful if you're going to try to like remote into your computer or something like that, but otherwise, Windows Subsystem for Linux 1 works just fine. I haven't had any problems with it um, other than with trying to remote. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. If you guys have questions, leave them below. If you have recommendations, go ahead and leave them below too. And I'll try to try to keep posting more regularly. So thanks.